When we use Duotone mode in Photoshop, picking colors is not the only item we can work with. Just to the left of the color picker, for each ink or color, is the curve control. I'll take this RGB file, which has a greenish cast, and first convert it to grayscale. We have to do this to get to Duotone mode regardless. So I'll go to the image menu, to mode, to grayscale and I'll discard color information as requested. Then I'll again go to the image menu and mode and duotone and I'll set the choice of type to duotone for this example. I'll keep black as the first color just to make things simple. Then I'll click the color picker box here for the second color and tell it I want to use a shade of blue, just for visibility's sake. When I OK out of the color picker, I can go ahead and add the color name, but obviously I'm not done. Having picked a color or colors, we can use the curve box just to the left here to specify where we want the color applied. Clicking the box opens up the sub dialog and lets us see the percentage spaces over here on the right as well as the color curve itself. The idea is to be able to tint various portions of the picture with the additional colors, but I can do it selectively. Below the curve is this gradient ramp, which goes from the highlights on the left to the shadows on the right. The key thing is the curve above it shows how much color is applied in those areas, highlights, shadows, etc. If a part of the curve is high, a lot of the color goes in those parts, but if low, only a little. We can also apply the color by typing the percentages we want over here on the right. The zero space is the percentage of color for the brightest highlights, the 50% space for the midtones, and the 100% or darkest for the shadow areas. The other numbers, of course, fill in the rest of the curve. So if I want to apply a touch of blue in the highlight areas, I need to either drag the left end of the curve up a little or type, say, 5% here in the zero space. But if I don't want much blue anywhere else, I'll have to lower the numbers, mostly to zero, or even delete them in the other spaces. I can drag portions of the curve up or down to adjust this, but typing the numbers is often more precise. And if I type a higher number in a space, then the percentage, that area gets more color, and if lower, it gets less. For example, if I go to the 50% space and type 35, I'm saying that where the color might apply to about 50% density or saturation, I only want 35. And if I change the 100% to zero, I am now saying that I only want a tiny bit of the blue in the highlights, somewhat less than might be expected in the midtones, and none of the blue in the shadow areas. If I now OK out, we can see that the picture has indeed been applied that color as we wished. I can do this with up to four colors if I choose the quad tone mode, and if I want I can use one color in highlight areas, another in midtones, and so on. Having seen the preview, I can go ahead and OK out here. But there's one other advantage we don't see until we're done, and that is that all of this goes into just a single channel. If I bring up my channels palette here, we can see that the duotone channel is the only one visible, and the size of the file has dropped from something like 22 or 23 megabytes down to just about 7.5 meaning in terms of disk space, we have a way to create a somewhat more compact file while still allowing some color to play in. And as you can see, the use of duotone mode with the color curves allows more precise control of the use of color, as well as another creative and artistic method.